A young woman in Saudi Arabia who sparked fierce debate after posting a video of herself wearing a miniskirt on social media has been arrested. The woman, whose name was not given, was detained for wearing what the Saudi authorities called immodest clothes, violating the country's strict dress code for women. A man has been arrested for filming the execution of a woman in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Authorities in Saudi Arabia have executed five Yemeni men in punishment for murder and robbery and hung their bodies from a crane in full public view as further punishment. The five men were executed in the southwestern town of Jizan. In September 2015, Saudi Arabia was appointed to oversee the UN Human Rights Council panel for the second time. This appointment has been widely met with confusion, as Saudi Arabia has a long history of human rights abuses, the most recent of which involves sentencing a man to be crucified for protesting the Saudi government as a teenager. So we wanted to know, what are Saudi Arabia's human rights violations? Well, Saudi Arabia is an Islamic absolute monarchy operating under Sharia law. Unfortunately, many aspects of the religious law run contrary to modern interpretations of human rights. The 20-month-old civil war there has killed more than 10,000 people and triggered a massive humanitarian crisis. In March of 2015, Saudi Arabia began bombing Houthi-held territory across Yemen, causing mass civilian casualties. They've destroyed targets ranging from marketplaces to hospitals, from schools, and even to a funeral recently, where 140 people were killed in a single strike. In August, the Saudis bombed the vital port of Hodeida, severely damaging a main source of Yemen's food and humanitarian aid shipments, and increasing the chances of mass starvation in what is already an impoverished country. The indiscriminate bombing has prompted investigations by the UN for possible war crimes. But while the Saudis are leading this bloody campaign, the blame also spreads to a great power whose support is directly contributing to the carnage, to the United States. The US has supported Saudi Arabia militarily since World War II, selling arms, providing military aid, and training the Saudi military on how to use US manufactured planes, tanks, and other weapons. In recent years, Saudi Arabia has bought more weapons from the U.S. than any other country in the world. Just since March of 2015, the U.S. has authorized $22 billion worth of weapon sales to Saudi Arabia. The most recent deal includes 20 Abrams tanks listed as battle damage replacements. The battle, of course, is Yemen. The weapons the U.S. sells also include cluster bombs, banned by most of the international community, and F-15 fighter planes, which is making up the vast bulk of what the Saudi Air Force is currently using as it bombs Yemen. But America's aid to Saudi Arabia goes way beyond weapon sales, and it's directly contributing to the current fight. That's because Washington is literally helping to refuel Saudi planes while they strike targets across Yemen. When the Saudis asked the U.S. to refuel one of their planes, giant American tankers like the KC-135 Stratotanker take off from the Incirlik Air Base in Turkey or from U.S. carriers in the Arabian Sea. They then link up with Saudi F-15s in international airspace. These airborne refuels give the Saudi planes a much longer range and allow Saudi's air campaign to become more lethal because the planes can stay in the air longer and hit targets much more frequently. As of late November, the U.S. had flown more than 1,600 refueling missions to over 6,300 aircraft in the skies bombing Yemen. That's an average of two a day. Yemen's Ansarullah fighters and allied army units launched fresh retaliatory attacks on Saudi Arabia, 
A Yemeni surface-to-air missile brought down a Saudi Apache helicopter in the Jizan region, killing the pilot and the co-pilot. Of course, one of the things that I'm sure were on her private server, one of those pesky emails that she hastily deleted, uh, was her foreign donations to the Clinton Foundation, and especially and specifically Saudi Foundation uh, funding. So the Saudis have actually funded 20% of Clinton's presidential campaign. This is according to the Saudi Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. He was quoted as saying such. There was a video of him saying that, and it was very briefly reported uh, by the Jordanian Petra news agency, but it was deleted hastily. It was only up there for a very brief amount of time. Explain to me what you didn't like about that deal. You know, my concern is what will the Saudis do with the weapons? For example, we know from Hillary Clinton's emails that were leaked, you know, through WikiLeaks, we know that she was concerned that the Saudis were giving financial assistance and arms to ISIS and to other radical Islamic groups in Syria and around the world. We know from Bob Graham's investigation of 9-11 that there are many who imply and believe that Saudi Arabia might have had something to do with 9-11. We know that Saudi Arabia is currently involved in a war in a neighboring country in Yemen in which tens of thousands of civilians are dying and there's a humanitarian uh, crisis created by this war. So I'm concerned what will Saudi Arabia do with these weapons and I think the weapons in a way belong to the American public because American tax do dollars go to developing these weapons for our defense. So this isn't like uh, trying to convince someone to buy apples from the United States or to buy tobacco from the United States. This is something that is uh, intimately involved with our national security. We shouldn't sell weapons to countries who I think may well do more harm than good with those weapons. Well, the U.S.'s assistance in the Saudi United Arab Emirates war against the Houthi Salah alliance in Yemen is now being outlawed. On Friday, the House overwhelmingly approved two amendments to the National Defense Authorization Act. The Davidson Amendment bans U.S. military action in Yemen that's not approved by the 2001 authorization for the use of military force. Specifically, the Davidson Amendment would prohibit U.S. refueling of Saudi and UAE warplanes bombing Yemen. And the Nolan Amendment bans the deployment of U.S. troops to engage in Yemen's civil war.